50 in careers. The, the two of you have had these wonderful, enduring memories and careers. Yeah. What, what is it? What is that common denominator that has given you that? I think we lived in a time that everybody was uh, optimistic. They were trying to build. We were trying to build something. And we, I mean, I think so. We, we loved what we were doing. I wanted to sing. I didn't want to be anything else but a singer. And, and loved it and tried to do it the best way, give my heart in it. And I always did that until today. I just learn. I'm curious. I'm learning more and more every day. But we well, have such a I agree time. with every word she <laughs> says. I mean, it's really, it's the curiosity that uh, that no. drives you. And it's the, the, the will to, to give yourself and to do that, nothing else. Absolutely. I mean, I don't want to do anything else. I want to be an actor and to entertain people and to give them a good time and to be able to sing to them. And I don't want to be a politician. I don't want to be a yes. anything else. That's what I want to be. Exactly. And every day we play on stage, it's another day. It's never the same. But when there no, is such a, a focus. It's a new day and you learn something more exactly. and you're different on stage and you receive also directly. If very you lose, you lose. We are very compatible. <laughs> but when the world is so focused on a youth culture, mm -hmm. you two just sort of stand up as icons for what? is achieved and there are so many people who get to a point and feel relegated to a background oh. you know just i'm interested in that point of difference that you can create and give others the will and the drive yes well okay. should i okay but what i what is it's that when i was younger i started i listened to the older people they were singing mm. the previous one i learned a lot from them and so i tried to 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 do my best for what I had with me, what I had to mm -hmm. give. I tried to give it in the best way by learning. Today, I learned from the young people also. Sometimes mm -hmm. the things I shouldn't do, but I learned from the young people. And this is what I think what, what, what keeps us uh, going. It, mm -hmm. It's the interest in what we love. Is it? Well, I mean, I'll, I'll go, I'll take a different angle. I mean, not, not that I disagree, but I'll, okay. I'll just bring a different angle. Uh, that, uh, I mean, when I did Fiddler first, I was uh, 30 years old, and I had to play an older man, uh, which I then said, well, he should be 50 or 55, which seemed to me very, very old. And I had to learn how to close muscles and how to give the, the posture, uh, 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 the silhouette, the right silhouette for the part and so on and so forth. Now it's much easier for me to play the part and uh, I don't have to uh, pay attention to those trivial uh, things that I did and uh, I, th I feel that I'm much freer now to play the part and to play the emotions and to play and I'm very experienced with what does it mean to, to, uh, to give your daughter to another man who comes along, mm. when at that time I had to imagine what it meant. Really? I had a daughter four years old, and I had said to give. Some. When when I sang then, uh, do you love me? Uh, after and my wife answers after 25 years, you ask me uh, if I love you, and I thought, God, 25 years, people are married 25 years. That's a lot, isn't it? <laughs> no, 25 years. I mean, and I'm, I, I've been with the same uh, lady mm. now for uh, almost 50 years. So uh, 25 years, it sounds to me like and, two youngsters. And I mean, 30 years, you just recently got married. Yes. So the two of you do have two a lot in common. Ago. Yes, yeah. absolutely, yes. Yeah. 30 years together, yes. With well, my... to what a pleasure it is to have um, two wonderful international performers of, of such stature sitting together and enjoying each other's uh, company and uh, and and talents. It is uh, it is really wonderful, and we appreciate your time. Thank you very Thank much. You. Now, of course, Thank Nani, you, you will you're going to stay with us because I'd love to have a bit more of a chat with yes, you. Of That's course, later we'll in the show. We'll be happy to say a little bit more. Yes. Wonderful. Nana, I won't be able to join you when you will have I the interview know. because I have to run to rehearsals. I know. Thank you. <laughs> and good luck as always. Thank you it very was much, Nana. And I'll tell you. I'll tell Nahum. Nahum yes. 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 Thank you very yeah. much. And of course, let's not forget at the Capitol Theatre, 22nd of September, Topol.
fiddler on the roof. Um, uh, thank you very much. It is such a, a treasure. Thank you. Good morning. Okay, we've got more coming up. Uh, of course, the world of show business. Uh, Peter Ford will join us from Melbourne. But next, some of the best looks for the uh, the warm the warm summer weather ahead. Stay with us. She's so fine. She's so fine. Wednesday on. Welcome back to Mornings. Nana Muscuri is one of the world's biggest selling female recording artists with over more than 350 diamond, platinum, gold records to her name. A phenomenal career, especially when you consider Nana was born with only one vocal cord instead of two. So I'm delighted again this morning <laughs> on Mornings to be joined by the Greek songstress herself, Nana. Welcome back. Thank you very much. And could I just say a special thank you for joining in the conversation with Topol off the top uh, of the Oh, I show. enjoyed it very much because I had really the chance to meet him in the late 60s, uh, 70s in, in London and I uh, admired him very much. It was wonderful to see him again. Mm. <laughs> Absolutely, yes. I mentioned in the introduction that you were born with one vocal cord. Perhaps you could explain yeah, that. Yeah, well, it's, in fact, it's not one. It's one that functions the right way. The other one is thicker. I have mm -hmm. two, like everybody. The only thing I have one of the, of the two cords, which mm -hmm. functions uh, very hardly. And so I learned since I was very young. You know, I realized that uh, I had the, same, the first problem with a doctor that I had to work out to make my voice sound normally. Because so it does not vibe the, si the same mm. way. One is thicker than the other. The one mm. vibes normally when you yes. sing, you breathe. The other one is thicker and you have mm. to work it out to make it more, more flexible to sound. Mm. That's why I have a, a husky voice when I speak, but when I sing, it's, it's clear. So, did that cause any difficulties as a child? Yes, it, it caused that I, I was always, uh, I had a bad throat all the time and they didn't know where it comes from and I had a husky voice and uh, so I couldn't reach the notes that I wanted. And when I realized that it was a problem, then I started to work hard to mm -hmm. make it uh, function the right way. Mm -hmm. It's a discipline, like the muscles, it's a discipline, you have to work it. Mm -hmm. like so many different musical genres that you've covered, let alone languages. How have you managed to do the various songs in so many different languages? Well, I was singing in Greek, but but uh, I, I was at the conservatory studying classical music, mm -hmm. so I learned about folk music, traditional music, and also as a young girl, I wanted to sing jazz and and mm -hmm. uh, you know pop music, also rock and roll. I, I was like all youngsters, so. This made me having different languages, but also when I was asked, you know, in, in the early 60s already, I, I invite, was invited by Harry Belafonte to perform with him and also Quincy Jones to record with it. So I wanted to really to learn other sounds, other languages, uh, learn other cultures. It was important for me. It was the curiosity, the, the interest that I have in the music that is not only my Greek music, but there are other other styles. And also, if I wanted to introduce the Greek songs, I had to speak a language so that I can introduce my songs. So I went, in Europe, we are all close different languages. So, so I started to learn languages in order to be able to communicate with the people. Also. So how many languages are you fluent in? Uh, six. Said <laughs> to what? But I can find my way in others. But, but I, I speak Greek, French, English, German, Italian, and Spanish. Mm -hmm. But I can speak a bit of Portuguese, a bit of Dutch, and you know, little things here and there. Very clever. Now we just heard the magnificent voice of Lilius White, and I know oh, you she, were in the she, studio. She was really gorgeous. I mean, I, I was impressed to 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 listen to her. She was wonderful, mm -hmm. wonderful. Again, a very, very different genre of music to, to what um, you do. Have you, have you ever sung rock and roll? Uh, a little bit when I was young, of course, and I, want, I, I never recorded a real rock song, but I said one day I could have, uh, you know, one day I will find maybe, never it's too late. Somebody, well, maybe before you rocker. retire, you <laughs> could do a rock and roll song or a rap song. Well, rap is, is, I remember, I remember that have a general rapping so beautifully, you know, but I, I don't think I'd, I could do it because I, I'm not so much uh, into it. You have to be also uh, honest with it, you know, mm -hmm. if you don't do it right, it's better not to do it. So mm -hmm. I don't think rap, but rock, yes. <laughs> After the, the the extraordinary success that you have enjoyed, this is your farewell yes. tour. What, what is it that you will miss the most? 
I think I will miss most the audience and uh, not only the applause. I mean, the applause is not so much, but it's this warmth that you feel at, at the end of a concert. You see some people cry, some people laugh. And this warmth that you feel inside that you have shared so many emotions with these people. And that, and that because of them, I, I have been around because if the audience does not like you, you don't stay. You know, you may say that you are the biggest, the greatest. The audience has to say the final wor uh, word. I think this because it's love what I receive from the audience mm. and I hope I give as much love they give me. And we all live for love, you know, so nobody wants to be apart from this. But I make sense that uh, this cannot last forever. So I wanted to make it consciously to know that this is my last word. And when I decide mm -hmm. something, I, I'm very positive for that. Mm -hmm. But to say thank you again for once more and just let them also, it's like what happens in the audience, mm -hmm. you know, they are also happy to say thank you very mm -hmm. much and goodbye. Well, it is such a rare treat to know somebody mm -hmm. with that attitude who really does love their audience and appreciate mm. how much they have uh -huh. given. So let's not forget the World Farewell Tour for Nana Muscuri. There are some dates from the Festival Theatre in Adelaide to uh, to Melbourne, to Twin Towns, to the Convention Centre in, in Brisbane. And uh, you must see one of the most wonderful performers uh, who has given so much over the years. And Nana, again, uh, to meet a, a, a star, a celebrity of your calibre, and to be as generous as you have through our whole program, I do appreciate it. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. Thank you. Nana Muscuri joining us. Lots more coming up on the program. Here's Jamie. Are you thinking about buying a new laptop? Well, Andrew is with us once again from Dell. Hi, mate. Morning, Jamie. Hey, you got a good looking laptop over there, mate. We sure 